You are listening to the Cattle Call Podcast. This is the place where computer-aided design and drafting meets humor and practicality, with a touch of business acumen thrown in for fun. Jim and Rocco, the owners of Zentech Consultants, the premier U.S. technology consulting firm for architecture, engineering, construction, and manufacturing, discuss the fascinating world of CAD with some humor and some honesty. The Cattle Call Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Cattle Call Podcast with Jim and Rocco from Zantech Consultants. I'm Jim, your fun host, and with me, as always, is my partner. It's Rocco, and you know what? As we're about to record this, Jim, I'm thinking to myself, why don't we record this at 5 o'clock on a Friday? When, when I'm just cooked. <laughs> Listen, you're the one who sets the schedule, dude. I just show up and ramble. <laughs> Don't blame me. <laughs> Why not on Tuesday at, at 12 or something? And when well, you ain't doing it during lunchtime. Come on, man. I got to work with you on scheduling. How about like, you know, Tuesday at like three in the afternoon? It's a nice break of the day, you know? Think that through. But I'll yeah, no, I don't know why people, we do it this way. I can do it. <laughs> see if we can get it to work. All right. You know what will cheer you up, Rocco? The engineering joke of the week. Okay, you ready for this? I'm ready. How can you tell if an engineer is an optimist? <laughs> How? They actually believe their own estimates. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen. An engineering estimate? Anybody who believes that is not an optimist, they're insane. So, <laughs> all right. Let's get into this for today. All right, so... Uh, so yeah, so today I want to I want to hit on a topic that we we've actually done before uh, on the podcast, but it's one that I think it kind of be, you know it bears repeat visits as time moves forward, and and I want to talk about two D CAD work and and whether it's you know uh, dead on arrival or if it's thriving in the industry, um, and and I really I I think there is a distinct break. Uh, between you know what the software developers and and the resale partners are saying, and what's actually happening out there in the real world, um, you know I, I also want to chat a little bit about the kind of the longer term prognosis of 2D CAD work and where we're likely to see it go over the next few years. Um, you know, look, you know obviously you know the CAD space it, it's an area where you know Rocco and I here at Zentech we're kind of noted experts in this field. We do a ton of work helping people train and configure and implement and support their CAD systems and, you know, their design build processes for the long term. Um, so, so I think, you know, in this environment, I think it gives kind of, you know, Rocco and I kind of a unique, somewhat, I'll say impartial view of this topic that you're probably not going to be getting anywhere else. Um, so, so Rocco, let's, let's start with the basic question, right? You know, are our clients in the design space still using 2D CAD or have they all gone fully 3D? No, there are tons of them are using 2D and without without throwing off your script. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's leave it at that and let the discussion flow. But uh, yeah. yeah, the 2D is not is not dead, that's for sure. Yeah. And and, and that's absolutely right. So so so, so that's the show, Rent. <laughs> that's that's the show. We're done. We can go home now. Uh you know, lot, lots of folks still using C, you know, the 2D CAD, so uh, I'm going to get a gin and tonic and I'm going to kick my feet up and call it a night. Uh, well, <laughs> it is five o'clock. It is five o'clock on a Friday, so I think that works anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess maybe not not quite so fast, right? So the thing I want to hit on here it's more than just kind of the yes or no of 2D CAD, but the why of it, right? Why hasn't 2D CAD died out in favor of BIM and 3D modeling the way that we've been told it was going to for the last you know nearly twenty years? Um, it, it, it's certainly not the lack of, you know, hard technologies to support that shift, right? You know, modern tablets and, and phones and two in one devices and so on. They all certainly have the capacity to display and work with, you know, large 3d models with, with no problem yet 2d CAD is still the master of the construction world. Um, now, now don't get me wrong, right? Anything I see here today, 3d modeling and BIM, they are vital tools in the design arena that every architect, every engineer needs to become comfortable with. 3D provides a ton of, you know, intelligence and data and control that you can't easily pull from 2D layouts. Um, at, at the end of the day though, right, what are you going to do with your 3D models, right? You're, you're going to extract 
two-dimensional construction plans from them so that you can actually build the job. Um, look, you know, to put this as simply as I can, there is a reason why 2D paper plans have been used for thousands of years. And that reason is that they work. They still work. Uh, look, if I need to let a carpenter know, you know, you, you need to build a, build a wall from point A to point B. The fastest way to get him that information is in a 2D plan, right? The contractor can just look, get a measurement and start banging nails. Um, if they need info, right, on, on the construction type and the finish detail and this, you know, the size of the studs, blah, blah, blah of, of that wall, a quick look at a numbered 2D wall section gives them everything that they need. Uh, you know, the whole thing takes 30 seconds to get all the information they need off of a 2D plan, literally 30 seconds. The idea that, you know, a 3D model on a tablet all right, or anything else it, it, it is ever going to match, you know, that ease of use or speed, it, it's just not realistic, all right? If you want that same information from a 3D model, what do you have to do? You have to log in, you have to open a file, you have to wait for it to load, then you have to zoom to the correct wall, then you have to know how to get the length out of the model, and you have to know how to turn on and off items that are in your way, right? Um, and, and, and you have to set different views to get the construction info. info. That, that's a workable process if you need really, really extensive detailed information. But that's a 10 plus minute process to make that happen in 3D compared to 10 seconds on a 2D plan. You know, the, the concept of, you know, full 3D models for buildings, in a lot of ways, it's a pipe dream developed by folks who have never stood six stories up on a scaffold during a thunderstorm trying to get the building buttoned up before all your interior finishes are destroyed, right? It's just not realistic. Um, you know, Ray Rocker, we work with a lot of construction folks who are kind of, you know, uh, actually beginning to bring their own CAD systems online, right? For the ability to kind of verify and extract 2D data quickly, right? Without involving your know, RFIs and so on. Um, what systems are they focusing on and, and, and what kind of functionality, you know, how's it working, I guess I'm trying to ask for most of them. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what I'm seeing the most is, is AutoCAD and, and BricsCAD. And uh, those of you who follow our podcast pretty often here, you, you hear us talk about BricsCAD um, often, and I don't want to go off into a, you know, a, a software sales pitch here, but I mean, it is, it is a much more affordable um, the tool than 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 AutoCAD and the Autodesk solutions, and it's it's available as a as a perpetual or an annual license, um, and, and you could save quite a bit against the cost of, of AutoCAD. So definitely something to look at. But I'd say those two, AutoCAD and, and BricsCAD. Okay, they're the big ones. Yep, that's kind of kind of yeah. what I see as well. So look, you kind of you get back to my point, right? You know, the reality is, you know, three D. It's just it's never going to work well in the construction world. There's just too much information to sort through in a BIM file for it to be cost or time effective to actually build from. Um, you know, 3D and BIM structures are great for the design world and they are fantastic in pre-con, pre-construction, right? Where you have the time to kind of go in and seek out and, and you know, address conflicts right before you get out in the field. That's great, and, and they're a fantastic help in you know accurate estimates and, and making sure you're specking the right components for your job. But once you get on site though, right, those 3D models are not the way to work, right? And I don't care if you've got the most expensive mobile devices on the planet, 3D and BIM are information overload out on the construction site. Um, you know, that, that's not to say that those mobile devices aren't a huge benefit. Uh, but I think it works better for field people to use those devices to access traditional 2D CAD files for their building purposes. Uh, it, look, it's a really nice way to carry thousands of plans and details and specs with you in your pocket <laughs> rather than, you know, uh, stacks of unwieldy giant rolls of plans and books of specs in your truck for each job, right? I mean, you know, look, let's face it, paper does not bear up to lousy weather conditions nearly as well as a tablet does. Uh, it's also, it's, it's much easier to scroll through multiple sheets on a, you know, a nice little, you know, 10 by 10 screen than trying to flip through 30 by 42 plan sets on top of your steering wheel or your pickup. Um, you know, and I think that, you know, software developers 
have pushed really hard on trying to convince construction people otherwise. Uh, because they're 3D systems, let's, let's face it, it makes them a lot more money, all right, for those than they get over the 2D. And, and, and that's really good for their stock price. Uh, but the reality is that full 3D hasn't, it doesn't, and it likely never will work to actually build things from. Okay, so I tell you what, let's let's get a break in here for today's sponsor. And when we get back, I want to talk about, uh, you know, uh, 2D CAD systems that work well for construction um, and if they need to be fully disassociated from the 3D world. All right, so stand by, folks. We'll be back in a minute with more of the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody. Today's episode of the Cattle Call Podcast is brought to you by Zentech Consultants. That's Rocco and I. We're bringing ourselves to you. Aren't we nice? So we wanted to talk to you guys today about uh, some of the things that we offer at Zentech Consultants. In particular, we wanted to talk to you today about our offerings around developing and upgrading your CAD standards. We are here to help you guys with all of your CAD standard needs from ongoing drafting and design support to block and library development, full CAD standards development, all right, CAD version upgrades, really whatever it is that you guys need when it comes to developing, implementing, and tweaking your current CAD standards. Or like I said, if you don't have any yet, we can help you build them from scratch. So Rocco, why don't you tell all the good folks how they can reach out to us and start that conversation? Yeah, there's a lot of information people on our website, zentechconsultants.net. That's Z-E-N-T-E-K, consultants.net. Uh, or you can give us a call, 866-824-4459, or even drop us an email, sales at zentechconsultants.net. Ooh, nice. Cat Standards from Zentech Consultants. You're listening to the Cattle Call Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Cattle Call Podcast. We're talking about 2D CAD today, um, and if it's still a functional process. And, and I think we made it clear in the first half that it is, um, especially for the construction world, right? But it's it's not just in the field that we're seeing 2D CAD still going strong. Um, even in the design world, there are a lot of projects that are still best you know handled or addressed or however you want to say it, using 2D drafting and design processes, right? Um, and, and, and I'll repeat what I said at the top of the show. All design people need to be comfortable and able to work in BIM and 3D. You do. But not every job warrants the level of effort that it takes to build a model. And I don't think that it's likely that every job ever will. Um, you know, let, let, let's set aside all the hyperbole that sales folks, you know, guys like Rocco, uh, you know, throw around about, you know, BIM and 3D. And, and look at the reality of this, right? The, the, the purpose of design, right? The whole function of design is, is so that you can show other people how to build what you've conceived in your brain. That's what plans are. Uh, you know, on, 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 a, on a complex new build, right? That can mean a whole lot of design information and extensive data and, and verifying interactions across a lot of systems. And BIM and 3D are perfect tools there. On, on a bigger job, right? If, but you know, if, if what you're doing is putting up a warehouse using stud walls and sheet metal, all right, or if you're just installing a prefab storefront window, all you need are 2D layouts showing people where things are meant to go, right? And then you need to step back and let the professionals, right, size it out and build to those parameters, right? Look, if you're doing simple buildings or basic retrofit work, it is usually enough for a designer to show the rough opening, right? And slap on a note of, you know, install per manufacturer spec and you move on, all right? And I have seen a lot of people and, and I don't mean to, to belittle anybody, but per particularly younger designers right out of school who kind of get this 3D BIM indoctrination. Um, I've seen these poor youngsters get drawn down kind of what we'll call it the quote unquote fully realized model uh, path of design that wastes time and money. And they wind up getting bit and yelled at by their bosses over this. Um, you, look, I can draw a 2D wall with openings and dimensions in under a minute, right? But modeling that wall in 3D can take a half hour or more, right? If the end 
output that you're going for here is going to be extracting a 2D construction plan from that model anyway, why are you bothering? Why are we doing that in 3D, right? And look, like I said, if you need that model, the full BIM model for structural or space or heat or power calculations and analysis and so on, that's a different thing, right? That's a full design and it's vital for that. But if you are just doing basic building processes and components, right, which is really very, very commonly all you need for things like, you know, residential and light commercial and even, you know, most retail, then any type of 3D can be overkill on your job and it can utterly destroy your design budget. Uh, so, so Rocco, you're on the design side. Do you see most designers working strictly in 2D or strictly in 3D or do you find that most of them are kind of working a, a hybrid system where they kind of pick which one is right depending on the job? Yeah, it, the majority is still that, that, that hybrid you know, it's um, it it it's AutoCAD and and, and Revit, right? Um, and and but I don't. It's rare that I talk to on the design and talk to firms that are just purely Revit and they don't they don't touch two D. They don't touch AutoCAD anymore. Um, I, I think it's it's a it's kind of a misconception that well, only the big guys are doing it because um, even the big guys are, are working in two D. So. Yeah, it's, it's it's still a blend. Yeah, I mean, I think if if you want to look at it, like I said, in the Autodesk world, right? Oh. They they rule the whole thing. Their AEC collections, where you get both AutoCAD and your verticals like Revit or Civil Three D all together, they still I think it's like a three to one sell rate at, at, uh, above the standard verticals, right? So almost everybody who has Revit has the AEC collection. They're not just buying Revit because they need both two D and three D. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I think that that answer that, you know, I, I think that really kind of underlies our point today about 2D CAD. It's it's alive and it's well, and it's not going away anytime soon. Uh, you look, and, and here's the, I see this in the news all the time now and it kills me, right? This idea of working in, you know, 3D and we're going to build with VR goggles and AI assistance that's going to help us and put in augmented reality integrations with the real world and, and the virtual world. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's garbage. It's cool tech, right? And and, and in you know, a presentation and office based approval kind of environment with the client, it may work fine someday. Um, but in the real world of design, build for profit and efficiency, that is never going to happen. Right? And look, if you're in a construction world, let me just ask you this, right? How is OSHA going to feel about you walking the steel 30 stories up with a set of Apple Vision Pro goggles strapped to your face showing you things that, you know, may or may not be real. It might just be augmented reality. How do you think that's going to play? <laughs> uh, look, yeah, 2D drawings, they are the simplest way to communicate effectively between a designer and a builder. And I haven't seen any type of technology. I don't care what it is. No technology that exists today even comes close to that efficiency. Uh, you know, sometimes, maybe even most times, simpler is better. And 3D is always going to be more complex than 2D. All right? If you think about it, right? Stop and think about this for a minute. 2D plans were developed as a shorthand for the 3D concept and the models that we used to have to build out of, you know, wood and stone thousands of years ago. Um, you know, those models took too much time an effort to build and change and modify for every project and every issue that would come up, right? And they were really tough to deliver to every person on a site, right? Just because we can create that model digitally now doesn't take away the limitations of a model. I, I don't see 3D models ever being effective for actually building from, so, right? So, so 2D, is going to be here for a very, very long time. Um, so, so Rocco, from a software standpoint, um, do, do you see the developers acknowledging 2D as a necessity or, or some still pushing at that concept of, you know, we're gonna get to pure 3D? And which CAD systems do you, you see who are investing in, in still developing that 2D construction process and the 2D tools the most? You know, it, it, I guess it's it's like I was saying before. What what I see is is really AutoCAD and 
and, and BricsCAD. And, and to your point with, with Autodesk and the AEC collection, if you notice, they, they have not done away with AutoCAD and they're not going to. Um, you know, and a lot of people question, okay, how much are they really investing and in building in, into AutoCAD? Um, you look at a system like BricsCAD that, that I mentioned earlier, um, they, you know, Brix is develops BricsCAD. Uh, they continue to, to invest heavily in into the development of the, the 2D and 3D features, but I, I, it almost seems like it's more heavily in, in the 2D area uh, of, of CAD than, than in 3D. Um, not to say that BricsCAD doesn't have a powerful 3D solution because they definitely have that in, in BricsCAD BIM, um, but a lot of the investments being made in, in, in advancing uh, the, the core 2D product. Yeah, and I see that too. A lot of that BricsCAD stuff is being heavily focused around you know, making it easier for construction people, right? To, to be able to work these, these 2D CAD systems and get the data they need out of the digital file. So, yep, I, it's kind of, kind of where I am on that too. Um, so I tell you what, folks, I'm going to throw out one last idea here in terms of why 2D CAD is never going to go away. Um, look, at the end of the day, whatever product you are putting out, right? You need to consider your end user. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if you're making chairs or if you're designing airports, right? The people who are going to use your product have to be able to use it effectively, right? You know, pointing tacks you know, or pointy tacks sticking up from your chair seat may look really cool and shiny and maybe it'll even get you a design award, but not a lot of end users are going to want to sit in your chair, <laughs> right? You know, maybe Rocco, but he's a little freaky, so we don't, we don't mention that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, but but you know, 3D modeling as a deliverable, it may sound really cool, and and you may make great use of it for your own internal design needs. But if we try to push that at, at people who need to build, it is gonna fail miserably. Right? The the simple truth is is that construction people are not, nor should they be, design technology specialists. Right? They need to focus their time and attention on the proper building processes and techniques, right? Not on learning how to, you know, navigate a BIM model or extract data attributes. It's not their job and it is never going to be their job. You know, asking them to do that is just as ridiculous as, as, as training your drafters, right? To, to learn how to, you know, use a site grader or handle a crane. They, they do need to know what those things are and what they do, right? But you need fully trained experts to run those pieces of equipment. You don't ever want to sit a draft or designer behind the controls of one in the real world. And you never want your construction manager or your carpenter or your plumber muddling about in your BIM model. Uh, you know, 2D CAD files are the simplest, fastest, cheapest, and most effective tool that humans have ever developed to build from. And, and I don't see anything simpler anywhere on our horizon. All right, so stop letting those software developers steer you guys away from 2D design, folks. It is important and it is here today, today and to stay. And with that, I'm going to bounce us out of here and we'll catch you next time on the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody, today's Cattle Call was brought to you courtesy of Zentech Consultants. That's Rocco and I. Uh, Zentech Consultants works with design and manufacturing firms. To help our clients purchase and implement the software that they need in these complex industries. Uh, we provide a single point of contact for clients to buy, develop, and learn the most vital software systems for your specific needs. Uh, Zentech strives to be your trusted technology partner from your initial needs all the way through long-term support and training for your entire staff. So Rocco, why don't you tell them how to reach out to Zentech? All right, yeah, you can reach out to us through zentechconsultants.net. You can email us at sales at zentechconsultants.net or you can even call us 866-824-4459. Excellent. We look forward to hearing from you all.